Okay, two more examples. Now, when there's more than one term in the numerator or denominator, I like to put it in parentheses. Okay, that's a good practice. See, I have parentheses right here. Well, anyway, 7 and 2, now this doesn't have a denominator, but 14 is the smallest number. Now, a common mistake is people multiply this one by 14 and this one by 14, but they forget to multiply this by 14. But you have to multiply each term by 14, okay? Otherwise, it doesn't stay equal. 2 goes in once, goes in 7, okay? And then you cancel. So then anyway, 21y, and then we use the distributive property. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times minus 4y is minus 8y equals 42. And now I can do sort of things mentally at this stage. 21y minus 8y is 13y. And then I subtract 16 from this side, makes it disappear, and I subtract 16. 42 minus 10 is 32 minus another 6 is 26. Divide both sides by 13, y equals 2. Now, one of the nice things, remember, with equations, you can check your work. Plug 2 into the original. 3 times 2 is 6. 6 over 2 is 3. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 8 is 0. So 3 equals 3. I know I'm right. You can check your answers. You can't get these wrong. Finally, the last example, they have two uh, numerators with more than one. So we put them both in parentheses. And then 4, 2, and 10, the smallest number they all go into is 20. So I multiply each term by 20. Then I cancel. 4 goes in 5 times, goes in once. 4 goes in 5. 2 goes in once, goes in 10. 10 goes in once, goes in 2. I use the distributive property 5x plus 5 minus 30 equals 4x minus 18. I like to simplify each side separately. Then finally I get the x's on one side, so I subtract 4x from this side, and 5x minus 4x is x, and then I add 25, makes it disappear here. When I add 25, I get 7x equals 7. Once again, you can plug it back into the original. You'll see that you get 2 minus 3 halves, which is one half, and then when you plug in seven here, you get 14 minus nine is five over 10, you get one half. So your answer works. Anyway, good luck.